Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three, the final part for today. My website is ggnonline.com and if you'd like to help me out, you can. It's a little donate button on my website. Um, it would be very much appreciated. Uh, but all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. My backup channels on YouTube are ddarko2013. My main one is ddarko2012. Okay, so I have this first video I was going to actually show, but it's just so much of like a melee and um, the audio is kind of bad. There's no real video. It's just someone that uh, recorded it while they were in the classroom. So I'll kind of read the little transcripts and excerpts. Um, so I think I just think it'll work out a little bit better. An audio recording of an exchange between a teenager, or sorry, a teacher and a student, probably a teenager, at North Rowan High School in North Carolina serves as a reminder that the school system is becoming a training ground for teaching kids to be subservient to the state while indoctrinating them into thinking that the First Amendment doesn't exist. So it says here the clip features a conversation which uh, teacher Tanya Dixon Neely tells students that it's criminal offense to criticize Barack Obama and that they could be arrested for doing so. Well, <laughs> the one thing I wanted to point out was that she... Uh, I didn't, you know, when I was listening to the first, like, three minutes, I thought it was just a student. She sounds like a student. She's like, I think, she, I don't know who was using the word cracker or something like that, but maybe we'll find out when we get into this. But, uh, actually, you can get a visit by the Secret Service for uh, criticizing Obama. So, you have to, uh, I think it was Ted Nugent or something like that. But, uh, yeah, you got to be careful what you say now, because uh, you may get a visit by the man. Uh, the Men in Black, it says here, the discussion centers around a story about Mitt Romney bullying a kid five decades ago. It says here, a student responds by pointing out that Obama admits in his book, Dreams from My Father, that he also bullied a girl when he was in school, and that both Obama and Romney are just men. So it goes on here, it says the teacher then begins yelling about how disrespecting the president is an arrestable offense. Quote, let me tell you something, you will not disrespect the president of the United States in this classroom. Do you realize that people are arrested for saying things bad about Bush? Do you realize you're not supposed to slander the president? So the student correctly dispels uh, the teacher's nonsense by pointing out that the First Amendment permits the most vigorous criticisms of the president. So it goes on and says you'd have to say uh, some pretty effed up crap about him to be arrested, says the student. They can't take away your rights to have your opinion. They can't take that away unless you threaten the president. So, but uh, it goes on here. And it says that the teacher said, okay, do I have to get my cane? And it goes on and says, as a social studies teacher, I cannot allow you to slander any president. And finishing up, according to Breitbart News, the student had asked his friend to record the discussion to prove to his parents what he has been trying to tell them for some time. Then next up, we have congressman seeks to lift propaganda ban, propaganda that was supposed to target foreigners could now be aimed at Americans reversing a long-standing policy. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Reversing a long-standing policy. Well, it doesn't really matter where you have the policy. Uh, there's already propaganda attacking Americans. You can see it uh, as clear as day. Just go on Yahoo uh, News. May, uh, go on MSNBC News. Go on any. Uh, just cl I'm talking about online. Just you know, because that's what I have. I don't. Just, I don't even have t television, uh, cable, and stuff like that anymore. So. You know, I know what's out there, and if I just visit family members or friends, I could see it, and it's just out there, man. I mean, everything. It's the whole, you know, the, exa the main examples are what? If you are not happy with the way things are going in the world right now, and uh, you don't like the wars that are going on, you're an anarchist, or you're a pacifist, or... You're a conspiracy theorist. It's weird how they lump all those in there if you're against the war. And then, of course, if you're for, like, ending the Federal Reserve or um, having the dollar backed by something, uh, then you're a right-wing, or actually you're a protectionist if you're against globalization, right? That's the big one. You're a protectionist. And you're a, a right-winger extremist, and that's associated with terrorists, so... You know, uh, that's, I mean, it's just really, really hardcore in your face. Oh, and let me, I just want to include the last one. I just remembered, of course, and if you're not for supporting Israel, you are a anti-Semite who, had you been back in World War II, you would be assisting the Nazis uh, in, in, in the death camps. Oh, and one more, sorry. And if you're not for blatant homosexuality in your face and alternate sexuality getting shoved down your throats, 
and telling you uh, if you don't like it, that you're a homophobe and you may be a homophobe yourself. I love that, how the experts say that, right? So it says here, an amendment that would legalize the use of propaganda on American audiences is being inserted into the latest defense authorization bill. And that thing's just packed with everything, isn't it? It would strike the current ban on domestic dissemination of propaganda material produced by the State Department and Pentagon. So, I, you know, that's the thing. It's just, you could see it, it's, like I said, you could see it in most of these shows on uh, the, you know, NBC, ABC, even just those main network channels. Uh, you can see it hidden in there about, ooh, the terrorists are going to get you. That's the biggest one. The terrorists are going to get you. Who are those big ones? They're sovereigns, right? So this poor bastard right here, uh, Wayne County uh, city worker, fired after finding gun on the job. So it says here that uh, this individual found a gun, secured it, brought it back to the road yard in Westland, which is Wayne County property, before he turned it into police. That seems to be where the problem lies because right now in Wayne County, there is not a policy describing what to do if an employee finds a gun on the job. So see, this is just total crap, right? There has to be a policy written, just like propaganda. Well, no, there doesn't have to be a policy because remember this story, Pentagon uh, gun, uh, this shooter that went in the Pentagon, if you remember, he was also a conspiracy theorist online, a blogger, uh, was what? He was, besides his being a mind controlled patsy, he was, the gun was from a Tennessee police department. So they didn't have a policy for that, for taking guns off the streets and then giving them to mind control patsies. So the, the craziness of this story is that he says these employees aren't allowed to possess weapons on work property. So this was their policy, right? Uh, never mind if you're this guy and you're working in Gary, Indiana. I don't know if you've been there, but I grew up like 15 minutes west of there, 15 minutes east of Alco Gardens. They're not the best of neighborhoods, right? And uh, if you're a white dude and you're working in one of those neighborhoods, you might want to be strapped or at least have, a, you know, just a little, you know, whatever, just a tiny little pistol or something. And yes, white people do live in those areas. So if you are there, you want to be able to defend yourself, you know, because if you look at that video in the beginning, you know, white people aren't the only racist people out there. I hate to say it. There are people that want to kill crackers, in quotes. So, you know, this guy, uh, you know, I guess basically he wasn't allowed to possess, possess a weapon. So he actually waited for the police after he reported it, and they never came. So, uh, you know, basically that's how they did it. They were going in court into policy, right? That's how the government always does things because they're so by the book. Speaking of by the book, NYPD officer to the suspect, my dick will go in your mouth. Sorry for the expletive, but it says here in New York City, uh, pig sergeant has been caught on video threatening several Brooklyn men with his gun and with sexual assault. So the cell phone video obtained by New York Post shows him launching into a profane tirade uh, while talking to several men suspected of criminal behavior. So he goes on here says, I have a long schlong. Uh, you don't, uh, Charles said, listen to me. When you see me, you look the other way. Tell your boys I don't mess around or F around. I'll take my gun and put it up your ass, and then I'll call your mother afterwards, okay? And I'll put your own shit in your mouth, all right? So he goes, you, you guys are hustling or whatever. I ain't got no problem with that. That's because they're the biggest hustlers, biggest drug dealers, biggest terrorists. But when I come around and I speak, you fucking listen. Tell your boy. So see, he's going to policy. He's going according to policy, which is they're the authorities, right, on uh, justice. They're the purveyors of justice. So Wisconsin cops tell women to bring cash to bail son out of jail, then steal her money. And it had to do with a... Uh, Civil asset forfeiture. So it goes on here. It says the Wisconsin Drug Task Force arrested her son, Joel, last February. Uh, she started piecing together his bail. So she was part of her disability payments and her tax return. But it goes on here. It says, so Gary and her family visited a series of ATMs on March 1st. She brought the money to jail thinking she'd be uh, taking Joel Greer home. But she left without her money and her son. Oh, my God. As I'm reading this for the first time, a pig told a dog... I alerted to the presence of narcotics on the bills and that the police department would be confiscating the bailout money. Hmm, see, it's all that money that they steal and stealing other people's property on the sides of the road. So those poor bastards having their money or whatever, if they're, if they're uh, you know, transporting weed or something like that, and they take it, yeah, they, they actually put that into a slush fund and that builds up their, their, uh, their Batmobiles and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, see, they were just going according to policy, right? So this civil asset forfeiture, a policy that lets police uh, confiscate money and property even if they can 
only loosely connect them to drug activity. So, wow. It says here, Korean surveillance school trains citizen snoops. Again, you don't have to train them. I see them all around. I see them all around little snoops, you know. They want to get in other people's business. Want to, you know, call the police in, right? Snoop on their neighbors. It says here, lawbreakers in South Korea. Beware, citizens trained to videotape illegal activity are on the loose and making extra income by selling the tapes to police. So, this is South Korea, remember? Big bad North Korea. No, this is South Korea. So the academy, the stu uh, the academy, the teachers and that, they're promoting it. Uh, they're the ones that are referring them to the governments and that. And it says here, however, people don't really see it as an important issue, says a sociologist. So see, this is society. It's about snitching. You know, they don't see it as a big problem. There is no privacy. It says here, nanny state knows best. And I love how they say nanny state as if they're originally supposed to take care of you, right? They're Like they're supposed to take care of you. They care about your health and, and your well-being. So I, I just hate that term, nanny state. I'm so sick of hearing it. it. Comes out of the UK. Parents to be sent emails and texts telling them how to bring up their kids. They will send regular messages with web links to videos providing trustworthy and practical advice to love the state and suck their schlong, right? It says here, and if you don't, you're an anti-government uh, uh, protester, right? You're an anti-authoritarian. The phone that gives parents total control, they'll be able to check text, calls, and even when switched off. So, see, it's, this is funny. It gives the parents total control. Well, who are the parents? Well, the parents are the cops. And the children are uh, these grown-up adults that call the parents, the cops, to handle their private issues. I've just seen that personally uh, around my house, and it just disgusted me because I had to have 10 freaking cop cars around my apartment building all day, and then the next day, and then the next day as they were following up. But see, the parents, they want to be like the police. They want to be like the authorities, too, and that's how they treat their children, too, like little prisoners. AT&T, most of them, not all of them. AT&T named vendor for Homeland Security, so that's a nice a uh, fascist economy rolling here. 8,000 contractors said eligible for U.S. cyber guard. Then local governments have the power to restrict drone surveillance in the United States. By what? Oh, by shooting them down like the chemtrail or aer aerosol sprayers? No, they're going to use policy, right? Use those, uh, use that political law, right? Wrong. So a message to all those people who want to get into the whole cyborg thing and you could become 60% uh, robotic or whatever, uh, you you're a cyborg, and so you're going to be hacked, right? You're going to a new generation of medical implants are going to be vulnerable to hackers. Well, who are the hackers? Those are the powers that be. See, they want to have total control over this AI system, this big infrastructure of cyborgs. That's the whole point. Like our computers, they can remotely get in there. So talking about the military, or talking about the government giving a flip-flop about your health, the military stops to bring health care to rural Alabama. Talking about fr dispensing free medicine. And uh, this is like FEMA when they go around after the uh, chemtrails create these little tornadoes and horrific things blowing whole towns off the map. Yeah, the insurance companies come in there uh, through FEMA and all that, and then they, uh, they kind of buy off people's trust. And that's going to build them the trust up for when they're getting uh, ushered to the FEMA camps, in which um, society is now accepted to trust the government and that FEMA is there to help. So. And the military will be there to help too. Uh, it says here, low-level cadmium increases women's cancer risk. And maybe that's the reason why uh, cadmium is one of the ingredients in the chemtrails. Vaccinate the world. And uh, Plato actually said what? That the ruling elite should guide society whose aim would be to preserve the average population. So it says the activities of the ruling elite in controlling population rights, Plato, must be kept secret. He writes, now these things going on must be a secret in which the rulers only know or there will be a further danger of, of our herd breaking out into rebellion. Well, the whole point of the population reduction is to uh, prevent the breaking out of a rebellion. So, so to control the population, New Zealand bans fertility damaging soy-based baby formula. Then you have more children in Washington State getting immunizations. Why? Well, because new numbers reveal how many families are opting out, so they got to put this piece out there to let them know that everybody else is doing it. Myth busted. Vaccinations are not immunizations. They don't help your immune system. Amanda Peet calls non-vaccinating parents parasites. The UN warns Somalia that there's a cholera outbreak. Hmm. Remember in Haiti, it was actually the UN that brought in the cholera outbreak. And Sharon Osbourne on, on her impromptu makeout session, she asked for permission, but he said no. And then when she took matter in her own hands, uh, Cheryl Underwood said, and now you are a leader for doing it. And then we have DC Comics uh, character to come out as gay because what their view has evolved, Ooh, like Obama's evolved. Then we have Kristen Stewart going dragon, kissing herself, kind of hedonist. And speaking of the devil, 
Filipino Christian conservatives denounce Lady Gaga concert. Thank you.